Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And before we start, as always, uh, don't forget to get us a little cup of coffee or something. Cheers. Alex, uh, who is calling from uh, Poland, Alex Pilkiewicz, uh, great to have you on the Prog Talks. Welcome. Cheers, Dario. Thanks for having me on Prog Talks. I'm calling from Wroclaw, Poland. Wroclaw. All right. Um, yeah, Alex, you are a solo artist and uh, you have a couple of releases already released in the last years. Um, but um, when this episode drops in, in about um, two weeks, then there's gonna be your newest release already out, and that is the EP called "That Way Madness Lies" or "That Way Lies Madness." Sorry, yeah, w- which... correct. <laughs> okay, well, lies madness. Yeah, <laughs> that way lies madness. Um, and I had the, um, I, I was lucky enough to to hear it a couple of times already, uh, and uh, I, I really like it. Um, I really like what you're doing on there, and I'm really curious um, about your background, where you're coming from, where your influences come from, and um, maybe before we start, I want to say. You're a kind of a prime example of someone like uh, that I meet on the internet through the like general prog community, um, and then at some point I realize, oh, you're actually re- releasing some music, and uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, now you have your new EP ready, and I want to know everything about it because it sounds stellar and it's quite unique, I think. Um, yeah, it's been a while since, uh, since the previous release, uh, Jar of Joy in 2018. Um, I think you've made a big step up with, with the recording, um, production and songwriting. Um, so what, what, what happened in between those two releases? Oh, basically, uh, everything changed, uh, between these two releases. Um, back in 2018, when I was releasing Jar of Joy, um, first thing I broke up with my girlfriend, so that was kind of uh, a hard thing for me. So for the next year, almost a year, I didn't make any new music because I was uh, processing everything. Apart from that, I finished my university, uh, changed jobs, moved out of my house, um, so yeah, everything changed completely and I got rid of some things that were eating up a lot of my time and I finally had a chance to focus on the music and I could finally afford to work with uh, people like uh, like the musicians who played uh, and mixed the record. So that's, um, that's why there was this drastic uh, um, increase in quality, I'd say. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. I'm very happy that I started to treat my music seriously. There's there's a lot of lot that went into that. Um, yeah, but I mean, you 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 just uh, mentioned the the breakup with your girlfriend, and uh, reading your uh, bio, you you mentioned that it um, it's it's not your first album that deals with personal emotions. You you did so before with Jaw of Joy as well. Um, but of course, this time around, it was a little bit different emotions than the ones about uh, long distance relationship that you put into Jar of Joy. Um, so you, ha- I, I have the feeling you have a very emotional approach to music. Um, and uh, being a solo artist, of course, it gives you the freedom to express to, to express it, no matter what potential other band members might say. Um, and so um, 
I'm really curious how you how you um, start a song or, or an idea. Is it first first you you think about the the emotion you want to convey, or does it start with a with a musical idea and then you take it from there and uh, think about what could what you could talk about in the song or sing about? <laughs> Damn, that, that, that's a difficult question, because it um, happens almost automatically. Uh, what would happen sometimes was mm, I was sad or angry, and I would noodle with the guitar and um, play these things. But with, with, every, uh, with every song it was very different. So well, one time there was a song when uh, I was both scared and angry, and I just started hitting the strings as hard as I could and something came out of it. Um, with uh, songs on this album, it was um, very different. So say with, with Trauma, um, I was just humming things um, in the kitchen um, as I was going through a, like, through a difficult time in the relationship uh, and had different thoughts in my head, uh, contemplating about uh, where I was going to take it next. So it came almost from, from humming and from lyrics, and then I would link other musical ideas into it, thinking, okay, this is a, like a long, monotonous, atmospheric vibe we have here, um, and it would be cool to try adding some noise with the guitars and going to the carnivalish side with it. Whereas with uh, songs like Honesty, um, I kind of had that buzzing going on in my head, like... And I just recorded that into the microphone and then layered some synths onto it. Um, and that's how it went into that direction. So yeah, I'd, I'd say that um, emotions usually uh, start the thing. And then once I start hearing sounds, uh, I take a more musical approach to it. Uh, well, one thing that I also um, realized, uh, especially for the start of the EP with Madness and Honesty, Madness starts with like very simple with an acoustic guitar and your voice, and that that sounds very um, natural and authentic. And then there's like a stark contrast, a switch to to synths. So um, the int instrumentation and stuff, the the arrangement. Um, uh, probably come comes a bit later in the process as well, right? Um, it depends. Usually, uh, nowadays, I like to work on everything at the same time. Uh, kind of taking the agile approach from my software development career. Uh, and an another thing that happened was that since I moved out to live uh, on my own from my parents, uh, my whole apartment is basically a music studio where I sleep. So uh, th there's nice. no issue with having my microphone hooked up and having the guitars everywhere so I can easily pick up another instrument and add things and try things. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the way I work. I, I do the arrangements um, right away, just as, as soon As'll as I go. write something. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, yeah. And you, you mentioned Madness. Uh, with Madness, it was uh, also quite funny how that song came to be. Uh, I wasn't planning for it. Uh, when I was getting ready to send everything for mix, I think, almost that point, um, I thought, well, um, how would I write a press release about this record? What would be in my bio? Uh, and I just started thinking about like strange creative things uh, or creative sentences in which I could put my bio, and I thought that, oh, that sounds like a song, what if I sing it? And that's how Madness came to be. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, that, that's probably why it sounds very different from the rest of the songs. So, uh, basically, an, an introduction to the topic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of the conceptual, progressive way of doing it. Um, yeah, but speaking speaking about instrumentation and uh, arrangements, um, you already mentioned um, that you were working with together with some other musicians. So tell us tell us about the guest musicians that um, contributed to uh, that way lies madness. Sure. Um, 
So we'll, we'll start with Katie Thompson, uh, whom I found on the internet on Facebook a few years ago uh, when Soyan posted her cover of Lucidity. Um, mm. And I was a little bit mad that they didn't post my cover, uh, only <laughs> hers. Uh, but I still subscribed to her because her voice sounded amazing. And then when she posted her cover of Reimagined uh, by The Contortionist is when I contacted her and uh, asked her to do something together. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, because not only, is, not only does she harmonize beautifully and her, her voice is great, it's also very unique. Um, so when I hear her singing, I know it's her singing. And uh, for me, it's often difficult to distinguish female vo vocalists. Um, yeah, so she, she, she's great in that regard. She works on many uh, side projects uh, with other musicians and just give, gives the gift of her voice to the world. So that's amazing. Um, I'll, I'll definitely have to check out uh, both those cover versions uh, of Lucidity you mentioned. A beautiful song uh, from Soen. Definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine was actually Opal. I didn't do Lucidity. Um, but we did the words together afterwards, so uh, there, there's plenty of it. Um, as for Adam, um, I first uh, found out about him when I saw his playthrough of Ruby Pool uh, by Vola, and I was, I was very amazed with how he plays this very um, intense, complex part over a very soft song and how it works together perfectly and uh, these are the kinds of contrasts I um, also would like to create. So say on the song Trauma there's this first chorus um, where uh, the guitars, the synths and the vocals are doing very like soft ambient things and the drums are just going with a, uh, with a drill there. Um, yep and apart from that what um, Adam did he offered to do some percussion as well. So it wasn't just drums, he would uh, add a lot of stuff. So I would receive uh, tracks with him with uh, instruments I have never heard of. Some like pots, tambourines or something. Um, also, on, on honesty, one thing I added by myself was uh, a bag of oatmeal when I wanted to have a shaker. I just wanted to make a shaker quickly. And then I decided just not to replace it with a with a virtual instrument because it sounded more <laughs> more real, uh, more honest. Yeah. Um, and with, with Max Morton, um, I was sending my album to all kinds of engineers, uh, my favorite engineers, uh, whom I would love to work with. And I would say that that quotes uh, were rather similar. So there was a, a, a slight difference in quotes, but n not huge. Um, the difference with Max was that he replied almost immediately, listened to my music almost immediately, and told me that he loved the music. So I thought, OK, um, I would much prefer to work with somebody who likes the music uh, he's working on, and who's not just doing it as a next, next job he has to do. Um, and the whole work process with Max was, uh, was great. So uh, as creatives, you always have disagreements about here and there about petty things and stuff like that. So I, I did torture him with things that I would like to change or things that I hear differently. Um, and he was also always very patient and very uh, deliberate to actually try to achieve what's, what I hear in my head. So I, I couldn't be happier working with these people. And I also have to mention my colleague from work, uh, Arletta, who played on uh, violins in Trauma. So the, the story with that was um, I applied for a contest uh, in Wroclaw and I suddenly qualified, which I didn't expect. And we had to go into the studio and record the song Trauma uh, for the next step of the contest. And we had to do it in like three weeks. The problem was that I didn't have a band. Uh, and like prog is quite complex to play, so assembling a band in three weeks was quite a difficult task. Uh, so my, my dad stepped in and we found a drummer also th through our acquaintances. 
and I invited my colleague from work to play on violins. And we recorded everything in eight hours at the university. And we were being recorded by students from a school nearby who were brought there to learn recording. <laughs> um, cool. Also, we weren't allowed to record the eye signal. So we just had to record whatever came out of camper ramp. And the problem was that on trauma, uh, say with things like the bass guitar, on some parts you don't want any distortion on it, and in some parts you want distortion on it. So I had to leave the knob somewhere in the middle, and it kind of did, didn't fit. Uh, also, we were in such we were in such a big hurry uh, that by the end of the day, when I had to record vocals, I couldn't concentrate, and my performance was basically trash. So I had to re-record everything anyways uh, at home afterwards. And the only thing, the only good thing that came out of that recording was uh, the violin, because as a classical musician, uh, Arletta just came in, uh, looked at the sheet music and played it in half an hour and left. And we were left with our campers, basses and uh, try, trying to do things. <laughs> All right. And, that sounds like a proper <laughs> Class, classical musician thing to do. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was a, a great surprise. And also my girlfriend, um, Anastasia, who made all the pictures, photos for the record, everything you see on the merch, um, on the album covers for Salary, Honesty, That Way Lies Madness, that's all her work. Um, when we were doing the photo shoot for the album, we actually went to a forest nearby uh, with uh, like white uh, female clothes and a whole bunch of paint. And it was already October probably, so it was quite cold. And I just had to spend like three hours in mud with paint on my face, posing for <laughs> the photo shoot. And she was constantly pushing me for all those three hours. So instead of saying, okay, you don't want to do it anymore, let's go home, she would say no. It looks great. Let's do another picture. Just pour some more paint on me. Um, <laughs> so with her, it's, it, like sh she's great at this stuff, and she achieves wonderful results. And when we were living in the forest, um, I was all covered in paint and mud, and riding a bicycle. Uh, and I was riding through some residential area where an old lady came out of her house and saw me driving, out, like riding out of the forest, and was absolutely scared. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Scaring old ladies uh, on your bicycle on, on the way out of the woods, that sounds like uh, a proper uh, thing to do for an EP called That Way Lies Madness. Um, let's go back to the, to the um, <laughs> musical side. And um, I'm really curious about your influences and stuff, but reading your bio... Um, you mentioned that you started actually recording stuff at the tender age of nine and just with a, an acoustic guitar and a voice recorder and uh, then the next month you would record another album because the first album was finished and you had no idea that albums were supposed to be published and uh, released. Um, so at, at what point did you realize that and was it like a specific album that... Uh, you had and said, oh, the, there's like people releasing albums, actually. <laughs> um, the first album I released, I released it on the place where I was getting all the albums I would listen to. I released it on a torrent tracker. Um, I, I, I I meant uh, was there was there like some album by some band that that when you when you listen to it you finally realized oh maybe I can also release my albums. <laughs> um, um, you, you know, I think it was a gradual evolution of a human being uh, that was taking place from when I was nine years old. Um, I think that the interesting thing with that is I would interact with a lot of musicians from my music school uh, who are good musicians and I would ask them if they were writing their own stuff and they would usually say that they don't, they just play things that somebody else um, wrote. And I think that the advantage I had was that at the age of nine I had no concept of quality. So I saw that everything that comes out of uh, my mouse and my guitar is great 
and it's art. So, uh, because I was that doing... very cute, to be honest. <laughs> because, because I was doing that, I was actually learning things, uh, and I wasn't being discouraged by getting poor results. So by the time when I could actually comprehend quality, I already had some skills to make something uh, moderately decent. Um, and by the time uh, that happened, it, uh, the, the first serious thing I recorded was Explanatory Gap. Though there, were, there was an album before that, it was called Life Corruption. Um, <laughs> still uh, <laughs> quite funny, and it was released on SoundCloud and MySpace. Wow. So, and, and how old were you then? Uh, I was 11. Wow. And, and, and what were your primary influences back then? My primary influence was... Let me think. It was Megadeth, I think. Megadeth. Wow. Okay. Yep. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com um. Yeah, yeah, so explanatory gap you just mentioned it is also the f is the first album uh, on the the streaming services. You still can listen to it and find it from 2014. Uh, between that album and the Jar of Joy um, one that we already talked about, um, there was also um, an acoustic thing uh, called Within the Brain Drainery, um, and. Like just hearing your your musical upbringing, or your like mm, like gradually learning things, um, I'm with just the acoustic guitar and your voice. Um, I I would like to ask you if you if you're like completely self taught in in in, in any um, mm, uh, on any instrument let's say including the vocals or did you did you take uh, lessons for for anything at one point um i finished the music school on classical guitar um, ah, and as that for, explains a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, as for vocals and bass uh, uh, i'm self-taught but obviously you can pick up bass if you play guitar but yeah, yeah, but uh, now you said on vocals you're self-taught. I think your you, your voice is pretty ex like you you, you got a pr quite expressive voice um, regarding your timbre, but but also of course the vocal delivery, your, the style in which you're singing is quite expressive. So um, do you have Thank any you. <laughs> any any specific influences like like some favorite vo vocalists you you try to imitate or you like you get in in, in you get inspired by listening to them when when working on your vocals um i'm not sure i would ever work on my vocals i would just sing as for my inspirations i think einar solberg is a big inspiration because for a long time i was convinced that uh falchetto is shit and I, if if I do that, then uh, it's very embarrassing. That's that's not metal at all. But when I heard Lepros, I thought, oh, um, so that, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, you can explore a lot of melodies. You can make a lot of harmonies that you wouldn't do otherwise. So that way, Life Madness was the first record when I actually embraced it and started experimenting with it. Uh, so I'd say, yeah, Einar, and. Apart from apart from him, um, the Andrew, who sings in Richelieu, was also a huge uh, inspiration for me. Uh, I'm not sure how I can put that inspiration to use because I don't have even uh, a remotely similar vocal range to him because his is just <laughs> enormous. Um, but th these two guys are one of my f favorite vocalists ever. Yeah, the, the, I mean, Lepros is, is pretty pretty common these days uh, to to cite as a as a reference or or inspiration for for anyone playing some uh, any kind of modern prog. 
Um, Richelieu is kind of, kind of a more deeper cut, I guess. Um, uh, and I'm not sure if they they're doing anything still. I haven't mm-hmm. heard. For well, they they are active. Time. They they haven't disbanded, but it, they're it's kind of as a- as as for metal archives or what? <laughs> uh, they post things on Facebook sometimes, like a piece oh. of their lyrics. So um, <laughs> I, I still hope to hear something from them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was uh, inspirations specifically uh, on vocals um, regarding music in general. Is there any other band you already mentioned? Carnival as well. Uh, is there any other band that? would come to mind that um nowadays is is a big influence on 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 your writing nowadays i would have to think because i haven't tried to write anything for the last year i think because uh we were mixing and promoting records but let's let let's let's say for the for the cycle for the recording cycle of that uh, way lies madness um okay I think uh, at this point, definitely Porcupine Tree and Steven Wilson. Um, Go Jira, a lot of it. <laughs> um, I would say that Vola is probably a band that's, uh, like Asgar said, that they're a mix of Porcupine Tree and uh, Go Jira. So I think it's sim- <laughs> similar for me. Uh, I'm, but I'm also very influenced by modern prog. So bands like Lapros, Carnival, The Contortionist. Uh, like the last album by The Contortionist totally blew my mind. Um, this year, that's, that's actually that's actually a band that I that I still need to explore somehow. I saw them live at a festival at a huge festi- festival once, but um, I never really took the time to explore them. <laughs> well, I I saw uh, The Contortionist in Warsaw in probably the smallest club I've ever seen. And I was thinking, oh, those six guys are going to play on that stage that's as big as the whole like club where people are going to look at them. And the, I, I'm not sure what they did with the sound. It was probably the best sounding concert I've ever seen. How is it possible? <laughs> it to- to- totally <laughs> blew my mind. Um, Sorry, you, want, you wanted to go on and say something about something that was released this year, right? Yep, uh, this year uh, the new Sleep Token album was released. Um, oh yeah, right. And it, it it's it's getting more and more difficult for me to find new things in music and to be really inspired or like enjoy music to the f- to the full extent as I did when I was exploring everything that Prog has to offer, because I've mm-hmm. heard a lot of things uh, at this point and. Sleep Token was a great surprise because even though their music isn't like very proggy and all over the place, um, the vocals of Vessel are very unique. Um, mm-hmm. That's something you don't hear every day. And their writing and vocal hooks and arrangements um, and the way they approach mix, which doesn't sound like the you know the way a powerful modern mix would sound like periphery. Say, it sounds different. Uh, so that that's inspired me a lot this year. Um, I'm also trying to listen to Billie Eilish to just broaden my horizons. Um, yeah, that, that that that's very 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 progressive, I would say. I mean, the the, the funny thing is in Prog Snob in the Facebook group is like every now and then people would. People would like one part would shit on Billie Eilish, the other part would defend her, and I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know. You can, I, I, I don't have a problem with people liking her, and I don't have a, pr- a problem with people not liking her. But um, these um, these foods become became quite um, regular and. Um, almost comical or <laughs> anyway um i actually listening to that way lies madness for the first time and especially la- the last track trauma i had very very specific um um band in mind that it reminded me of and i'm not sure if you're familiar with this band i have this album here 
and I'm gonna show you the album cover and let's see if you recognize it, if you've heard of them. Oh, I'm so sorry, I probably haven't. I thought you were <laughs> going to mention Tool. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Polish band and you should check out this album, Progma C, Bardo Travel. Okay, I, I most definitely will. Uh, when was it released? <laughs> Let's see, 2009. Okay, no, not, not too old. Yeah, um, they definitely also have their tool influences. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, and I saw them at a proc power, playing a proc power like um, maybe two years later. Um, and it was pretty cool. And one, one of the uh most random things happened because uh, the symbol stand of the one of maybe china or crash ride or whatever from the drummer kind of like he was hitting it so hard they fell over and it it split it cut the the base cable <laughs> <laughs> so they had to change it so that was one of the super random things that could happen on stage so super cool band i ke i keep hearing from my polish friend who lives here in munich that he's who, and who knows the guys that they're apparently still together and make music but they haven't uh, i think they haven't released anything since then i might be mistaken i will have to look look it up again because i really like it and i really like to hear something similar um on your album now a uh, one one specific um sound thing i i i also um kind of picked up here and there not only on that way lies madness but also on some previous stuff of yours is uh, the use of a bottleneck or slide guitar um so did you have any any specific uh, influence where where you could pinpoint it where it comes from no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no worries, what, what, just, what happened was um, I saw it somewhere in the drawer as a kid, and I didn't know what what, what it is. And my dad said, "Oh, it, it, it's a slide. You like push it against the strings and make make sounds." And that that's how I was using the slide. Um, actually, I started using it before I even heard music using the slide. I think so. It was totally. Uh, ah, unexpected cool. for me. I didn't know you could make this sound on, on guitar. <laughs> I, I had a similar revelation a year ago with Ebau. So I saw uh, mm -hmm. Tom Fountainhead, who used to play on one Obscura record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I saw a, vi a video of him using an Ebau, and I was like, oh, so you can, you can make a, gu a guitar sound like that, I have to use it. So I did <laughs> use a little bit of it in the end of uh, Honesty. Yeah, yeah, very, very, very cool sounds that you can create with that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's not that common in in in, in prog metal, um, like the the use of like Robin uh, and Leprous used it on all on the intro of all the moments, and and it was totally unexpected. I was I was I had to think uh, I I had to think about Bon Jovi instantly, you know, uh, uh, wanted dead or alive or some 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 song. Um, and I, would, I, I think I, I think Alison Chains used slides on ah, some of their songs, be. so yeah. that that could be a place. Um, but yeah, I, I I would have never expected to um, have uh, Bon Jovi pop up in my mind listening to Leprous. <laughs> All right, Alex. Uh, you, you, you are as we establish. You're a solo artist. You're publishing your music um, under your own name, and um, you also did, also told us a little bit about um, this um, like uh, opportunity where you had to put together a band quickly because of this contest, and and uh, trauma resulted in that. The song, um, even though you had to re-record some parts later. Um, or most of the parts, <laughs> um, but did did you ever think of putting a band together and like play live, or is, was that ever a thought, or might that become a thought in the future? That's my dream, um, and and it's always difficult to talk about it. But the the biggest problem with it is. Um, if I put a band together and uh, start playing live, I won't really have uh, the time and the resources to 
record new music. So I have to make a decision what's more important to me. And at this point, um, I'm very eager to make a follow-up to That Way Lies Madness. I have a lot of songs written in my head that I want to desperately want to uh, hear what they sound like when they're arranged. And that's what I plan to do this winter. So when, it, when the dust settles after all the, after making all the all promotional noise. Um, after all the madness of releasing. All the madness of <laughs> releasing the record. Uh, I would really like to like re relax and shake a bag of oatmeal again. And see, see where it <laughs> takes me. Uh, but I would definitely plan to make a touring band um, once I have a little bit more music and a little bit more exposure uh, online. Because to, to be honest, the last six months uh, when I started promoting things um, is the first time I'm try I I'm doing it the proper way and not releasing an album in a Facebook post. So th that's been interesting. <laughs> uh, but it's, it eats up uh, just all of my time. I, and I never imagined that uh, making Instagram stories could be a full-time job. So, Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you, I, can, can, I have a lot to learn from you <laughs> in this regard. Well, I, actually, I, I, I'm also a, a pupil in this case because I'm um, like, like um, personally, I, I rarely use Instagram, but with the prog space, of course we do. And now with promoting the festival that will, will have taken place once this episode drops, um, we, 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 of course, we also have like, like a crazy promo game going on with with lots of stories every day and i actually uh have the the privilege and i'm really thankful for our friend uh, our prog space friend pulin um teaching us all those things but it but it but it really takes up a lot of time of course and um yeah but as far as i can tell from my perspective i think you're um you're you're already gaining some traction here and um yeah i wish you all the best with uh that way lies madness uh which will be already out when you guys out there l are listening to this episode um thank you so much for for being on the proc talks alex um do you have Bandcamp as well um exactly yeah i just i just uh, um redesigned it properly to launch the merch store in the last excellent in the last three days i had zero orders so people who are watching right now still can catch this limited edition vinyl if, mm. if they're quick to act <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> or I, not. I, I i i saw i saw the picture like in the woods with a with a with a clear like like mint clear vinyl or something yep. it was also green greenish like like the, the the whole the whole um artwork is has a green green color theme going on beautiful all right guys uh, pe people out there definitely go to bandcamp pick up a beautiful vinyl uh follow alex on facebook instagram where wherever you can find him on youtube of course where you also have um yeah cover versions and stuff um Go follow him, go check uh, out his music. It's really cool stuff. Um, and um, yeah, also give us a like and follow and subscribe. Uh, it helps us out a lot. And uh, also the cup of coffee or tea, um, it does help. And uh, yeah, we're grateful that you, you, you're you checking us out and and we hope that you like what we do. Um, and if that's the case, you can tune in again next week w with the next episode of the Prog Talks. Until then, take care and keep spreading that prog love. <laughs> yep, cut! The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Bensvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. 
This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.